conditioner performed exceptionally well and earned an average rating of 4.3 stars from 5,000 <coughs> plus organics ratings and 350 plus reviews in major e-commerce platforms. The almond drops ultra light body lotion for summer, summer use along with the winter lotion show, saw an uplift in e-commerce channels on account of improved display images, new pack launches and campaigns. <coughs> The Almond Drop Soap, which is consistent of text in modern trade uh, chains and e-commerce channels with focus on various bundle packs offering this on the retailer. The Almond Drop Serum, where, uh, Almond Drop's hair serum achieved 20% year-on-year growth, uh, year year growth in H1 FI25, aided by display and influencer support. Bajaj 100% pure coconut oil continues to deliver strong double-digit growth. We continue to witness consistent gain and nearing double-digit market shares in traditional Bajaj stronghold states. The market share in Maharashtra also saw an improvement in Q2 FI25 supported by media initiatives and distribution drives. To enhance the brand market reach in general trade, specific SQs of 300ml jar and bottles were introduced during the quarter. We also launched a 1.2 Peter jar for one major e-commerce platform. Digital marketing campaign across platforms delivered remarkable result, again achieving 35 million views and an impressive 1 million clicks. Pricing interventions were taken in Q1 as well as Q2 to offset the impact of education in Copra prices. As of now, we have taken 6% in, uh, in, in uh, our uh, 100% fee of coconut and we'll continue to monitor the Copra prices to see how for the how much further pricing will we need to be taken? <clears throat> During the quarter, we relaunched Bajaj Gold 100% pure coconut oil with improved packaging and formulation for the east and northeast market. The product is now available in three SKUs of 100 ml, 200 ml bottles, and 175 ml tin. The GTM targets for both primary and secondary were exceeded. The initial product feedback on this brand has been very encouraging from both the channel partners as well as consumers. With the launch of this offering, we expect to gain market share in coconut oil category in the eastern states. We continue to make uh, good progress in diversifying our portfolio with the MPD and traditional portfolio now contributing 20% with a double digit growth in H1 FI20. On a three year UGR basis, this portfolio has been in excess of. This highlights that our strategic pillar of portfolio diversification. During the quarter, the LLP prices saw a marginal decline uh, due to weak demand and reduction in crude oil prices. Uh, refined mustard oil prices uh, strengthened by about 11% year on year, driven by higher import duties on all edible oils and limited mustard availability. The copra prices also saw substantial increase year on year, as well as sequentially fueled by higher demand. Both the latter had an adverse impact on gross margin for the quarter. Multiple initiatives have been taken to reduce metric oil structurally, which will give us sustained benefits for the long term. These initiatives have resulted in savings of over 2.5 crores in the first half of the current financial year. Our focus on increasing productivity through smart manufacturing programs and use of technology have resulted in improvement in productivity by 6% at our Guwahati facility and 14% at our Ponta site facility in this year. We remain committed to ESG goals by optimizing process to reduce water consumption and energy consumption at both plants and pursuing water positivity in line with the ESG targets. The key initiatives to lower carbon emission include automation and installing advanced uh, machines, energy efficient compressors, and Miyawaki tree plantation project at our plants. We implement rainwater harvesting projects at our plants, which led us to being about five times water positive. TSI initiatives through rainwater harvesting and sustainable agriculture practice, uh, practices undertaken during H1 has positively impacted more than 11,000 families across 420 villages, mainly in UP, Rajasthan, and Maharashtra. To so sum up, with sum up with rural going, uh, rural growth continuing to be resilient, sluggish demand in urban uh, expected to have bottomed out. We expect demand conditions to improve going forward. This coupled with our thrust on initiatives, our strategic initiatives, expanding the distribution reach to project R1 in general trade, portfolio diversification, filling up organized trade, filling up of international business. We are confident that our performance will track well and achieve sustainable growth in the near to the medium term. So with this, I end the opening remarks.
and open the thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone wish to ask a question me press star and one on that us on telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles <coughs> our first question is from line of avnish roy from novama wealth management please go ahead so thanks uh, my first question is on the geo tagging and fencing uh, what exact uh, benefits will come in the urban areas once uh, in november all the outlets will be covered and uh, how common is this uh, with the larger uh, hair oil companies so will it be more that uh, you come at a level playing field with them in the urban areas or this is something different versus the larger players no so absolutely correct abhin we will actually come level playing with most of the larger players i would not say all the larger players but most of the where good practice uh, fmcg companies all have done geo tagging and fencing is one step higher so i just explained so geo tagging is basically you go to each of these retail outlets and basically tag the outlet so that you know exactly the longitude latitude of that uh, place so first and foremost that you figure out is that what you are reporting in your system in your both dms as well as ssa etc are actually shops which actually exist and in this there will always be a little bit of a churn you will actually find that there are phantom outlets this has happened for all companies we are also seeing there are some not very large numbers but in certain places physically that actually physical shops are not there so what happens is as a result your efficiencies moment you identify the shops and actually tag the shop with a specific uh, specific location then even when your isrs etc are visiting then if you are reporting 40 outlets they'll actually have to visit 40 outlets rather than have some 10 outlets which are phantom outlets which actually just visit 30 but actually you are reporting 40 so this efficiency will come in fencing is one step forward where uh, after you have tagged the outlet you actually fence it whereby you can only take the order from that shop when you have reached that shop you can't take a order for a shop let's say 2 kilometers away so then it is absolutely perfect so fencing is a little more hard coded so we are trying out with a few states to see how it will work we will not go ahead with all the states also at this stage but tagging is something that we want to do so that we have a absolutely clean retail map as far as entire urban uh, this thing in the country is concerned so we have finished about 80% we will be uh, i mean near we are now near completion so we have a full map of where our outlets are and now when you add you will actually be also tagging them as we add them earlier this was not happening so this has been done uh, in the last maybe a uh, couple of years by some of the top players so we are just going to do that as well and be at level playing field with the top players many of the large players they do not have that so to understand this better uh, ultimately when this is fully done and uh, there is some time for uh, execution uh this helps revenue does this help cost or uh, does this help in terms of uh, better selling of new product because sales guy will have to go physically to the store because the phantom store which you explained it seemed that uh, virtually things are being managed so actual effort may or may not be there so could you tell us revenue this will help or in terms of cost this will help so it will help both so if you look at see cost to sales will clearly uh, improve Uh, it will become better because uh, while you are reporting that you are going to 40 outlets you are actually going to only 30 so now you will have to go to 40 new outlets the moment you go to this 40 new outlets because if that is your let's say effective man day you need to visit 40 then you will have to identify those new 10 outlets and go to those shops so two things will happen either you will reduce the number of people by uh, looking at the geography if such outlets don't exist but typically that does not happen typically what will happen is those Thirty that the fellow was doing in the bid, he will have to add ten more and do that recovery. So it will be a mix of both. There will be some maybe pruning of one or two uh, ISR territories, etc. But most of them will actually have to physically add these outlets uh, to ensure that uh, this effective mandate is covered. So it will both help in cost to sales as well as in terms of number of outlets that you add. Uh, my second and last question uh, will be on the pure coconut oil business uh, you have done good scale up in uh, those uh, four states where you have called out so if you could tell us uh, one there is a very sharp inflation in copra so have you also passed on uh, to the end customer similar to what uh, market leader has 
second uh, for example this 2.1% market share in maharashtra in coconut oil uh, where has this come from is there repeat purchase happening i am sure you are offering more value to customer versus uh, the market leader which is which is fair because you have entered late but uh, is the repeat purchase also happening and how is the market leader uh, retaliating because they are they are extremely large uh, they have much better sourcing advantage uh, than you because it's not possible for you to have the same sourcing advantage there is no comparison in terms of size uh so if you could also talk on profits how are uh, profits in this business in terms of uh, gross uh, margin i'll start with the second last uh, premise of yours which is what i've been countering for quite some time and i i i personally think that is a great work done by a supply chain team whereby if you track uh, because for copra price because it's a single commodity price we have a good understanding of who is buying at what price Unfortunately, because of our strong backend, we have been tracking for the last eight nine quarters as to what kind of prices, let's say, everybody is buying versus ours. And in quite a few cases, we have actually had a better pricing. It might be a little difficult to understand why in a, a, a player which is much larger can this thing because some of it is also based on your forward purchases, etc. Because some of them will have to be speculative purchases in terms of purchasing in terms of a little bit of advance to. Uh, so it can work both ways if you purchase in advance if the prices were to fall somebody else will get an advantage but fortunately for us the last eight nine quarters we have been able to at least track it well our market intelligence have been pretty strong because we have invested a lot of effort in terms of getting our entire back end right up to the copra farming to the farmers etc so good understanding right from me downward to lot of people have a very deep understanding of how this entire cycle works and we we have a sense of where the price is going what is nafa doing what is in terms of yeah nafa doing what is in terms of the kerala farmers union doing in some of pricing so we keep a good track of that so fortunately for us we have been able to do pretty well in terms of uh, purchase pricing is concerned there is not too much difference between what we purchase but it might be a little difficult to uh, accept it from the outside but that's how for the truth is the other thing that we have done is we are also pricing the station wise we have started with a about a 10% lower mrp as far as the larger player is concerned because that's how we wanted to do it now if you look at the pricing now the price gap and that is a something that we are conscious it that if we had if we actually scale up our product and we are able to cross the let's say the three figure mark and go beyond uh, let's say you know annualized basis and which we have done uh, earlier itself so that we will slowly bridge the gap today that 90% is slowly moved towards 95 and we tend to take this even for that the basically the price indexation for that so so we intend to take some advantage from that and the third thing that we talked about is in terms of price passing on the price i think from the market that we get in fact uh, one of the uh, good things that i would want to report which i reported even last quarter is that gnl trade today is higher than modern trade plus e-commerce as far as coconut is concerned i think that is a great proof of that the product has got well established in the market today and even in maharashtra etc i'll come back to the maharashtra but so having done that now we are clearly seeing that we are able to pass on the price matrix we have like said we have taken about a 6% price uh, increase as far as q2 is concerned and we look to even take further price increases in q3 as we work on so so this is the price gap that we will be meeting as far as maharashtra is concerned it is not uh, it is not first time seeding etc because the product was launched in maharashtra about one and a half uh, about seven quarters back so this is more repeat purchases are happening so distribution is going up in uh, in overall country level itself we have more than 50% our distribution is already coconut i mean of adh what we have in adh more than 50% of that is already so that's a substantial number i would like to think as far as a new product is concerned so it is tracking well all across and i think we are in a position that we can make our coconut portfolio far stronger off yeah thank you so thanks uh, thanks that's all from my side thank you thank you our next question is from line of anshum nandesha from brainston investments please go ahead yeah hi jagdeep good afternoon uh a very basic question which i think most of the uh, people would have and i really appreciate some of the things that you guys have been doing over a period of time but if i just look back 5 years you know 
and see ultimately whatever you are doing is towards the betterment in terms of both revenue and bottom line. So five years back, we were at around 900 crores top line, 250 odd crores for operating profits. And after all the changes that we have been doing, some successful, not so successful, we are still at the similar level of top line and half the amount of uh, bottom line. So as an investor, how should we look at it now? And when will the numbers come? And when will the company grow? It's a perfect, uh, absolutely perfect question. And I think uh, if you look back five years back itself, we had said that that this will be a uh, this will be a hard uphill climb because a lot of the things, initiatives that we are talking about, some of the things that you said are good, are tracking well and good initiatives taken. We knew that all of them will be investment hungry. There was no easier way out because the ADHO had done great work and ADHO obviously needed to grow, but the market needed to grow along with for ADHO to fuel its own growth. But we wanted to ensure that all the other levers that are required to be pushed are pushed because otherwise it would always be a situation where we will keep looking for a higher EBITDA in the short term and not compromising the mid to long term uh, perspective. And that's where we looked at our modern trade e-commerce, which if you remember five years back e-commerce was 0.5%. Yes, COVID did help, but the kind of numbers we are reporting is in, I think, between class in terms of the percentages that we are using. The organized trade business is now at 30% salience, which I think will remain at one of the best ones, given that there has been pressure in GDP. So this is one. Who is we were to look at what beyond ADHO. ADHO, five years back, as you said, I mean, was a 5% uh, uh, contribution. Today, that contribution, or rather the non-ADHO, the a product range beyond ADHO was uh, just 5%. Today, that has come to 20. And as you can see, all of those ranges, whether it be the AD extensions, that is hair and care, hair and skin range, or whether it be the coconut range, all of them have been expanding much better. Well, ADHO remains where it is in terms of the market. If the market is declining, ADHO is also falling track. Yes, I would agree that there have been not sharp gains as far as ADHO is concerned. That could have only happened if you had gone into, let's say, the southern markets or some markets where we are underrepresented. So that I would admit has not happened. So all the tracking that we we were planning to do all the all the initiatives that we are planning to do international growth, uh, modern trade, etc. I told you the products, etc. All of that tracking. Yes. So well, the big difference that we had done during our projections at that time, as today, is that we did not expect the market to tank this badly, and especially in the last two years, the way we have been seeing, we had not projected that. But I think the fundamentals, or, or rather the basic structure, the foundations of the company doing well have been all put in place, uh, whether it be systems, processes, people. I mean, these are all things which are never mentioned, but I think the kind of people, quality, etc., that we have built, I think we are now very clearly set for a growth. The market obviously needs to turn, and when the market turns, we are in a comfortable growth. So, two, thing, two, two things quickly here, JD, in a, in just a follow up of these questions. First, if I look at ADHO as a portfolio, if I look at last five years, probably the RM prices have gone up. So I'm sure our average product prices would have gone up there. And ADHO falling as a percentage of sales uh, would mean that others should be able to aid the sales rather than absolute sales remaining at the same level. So while we would have got probably so 150 crores or 200 crores from new products, the I, I'm, I'm sure your thought process would also have been that this would add to the top line. Unfortunately, that has not happened. That's the first part. Second, we've always maintained in the past that EBITDA margins would suffer, but company would maintain absolute level of EBITDA. In this case, the EBIT, absolute level of EBITDA is actually halved. And this is also happening in the backdrop. When you look at last five years, most of the consumer companies have actually grown their top line by 50% on an absolute basis over a period of five years. Yep. So I think when I look at this and when I look at our performance, is it something that we need to actually rethink as to where are we going? Are we actually undermining ADHO? Is it actually uh, something which we should be focusing on because that leads to larger growth? So as far as ADHO is concerned, so let's answer all your questions in part. So as far as ADHU is concerned, 
if you look at all the levers that could have been pushed are being pushed so whether be it looking at the entire digital aspect of it bringing the entire digital uh, earlier we did not have anything working as far as the digital part is concerned we created the digital marketing team etc and a lot of good work as far as the digital side of it has already happened in terms of marketing campaigns a lot of uh, the thematics etc has been changed more made it more topical and more relevant to the new age customers so that work itself has happened as far as the product is concerned in terms of new is two editions newer packs newer excuse newer uh, and in terms of uh, initiative as far as the packs etc themselves are concerned a lot of it has already been in place but yes the market is what it is in spite of pushing the amount drop it has at the same time yes i would agree on that now coming to the point that you said that all the other companies have had this growth and we have not you are absolutely right but on the same point you also need to look at so how much has been contributed by new products or from portfolios to which they already had fortunately our portfolios and the adh are nothing else all the other companies had portfolio whether all these competitors that you talk of they have been able to play one portfolio or the other which they have been able to push up if you look at uh, you dissect this growth in the last 5 years there will be obviously there will be some companies where only new products have achieved that but uh, most of the other companies have been from portfolios either of acquisitions they had done earlier which have now started scaling up or portfolios they already had which have been there unfortunately we did not have that advantage and that is what we are setting up for only other choice that we have had we would have had is do not take up this new portfolio do not take up the international wages just put on push on adho i am sure adho might have given another 2% growth over and above i am assuming i am not so sure but in case that i would think the company would have been maybe would have reported better better margins but would have been structurally much weaker which i think is something that we would have wanted to avoid i think we are in for a much better future than we are today So last question then lady uh, does sorry, this mean in next five years request to join the question give any follow up question just a follow up just a follow up to this okay so lady in the next five years thank you our next question is from line of core of gandhi from glory tail capital management please go ahead yes thanks for the opportunity uh so sir uh, as of now in the market the way this quick uh, commerce is growing in metros uh, have you looked at our arrangements with these uh, quick commerce companies about showcasing our products and how are we looking at uh, improving our sales from these uh, quick commerce platforms and uh, about the display of our products so because it is really very important to grow uh, our, our top line and get our products on the customer preferences so your thoughts on that so if you ask me uh, that is one area where i would think that we have not done as well as we would have liked even in the last conference i mentioned that quick commerce has to become one of our key focus area and we have to just go upside out uh, upside down to ensure that quick commerce we have growth which is far far higher than what we are we had a 42% growth as far as we come uh, quick commerce concerned this quarter i think that is if you ask me overall where Uh, my disappointment would be in terms of initiatives this is one area where we have not done and clearly that's the focus area i am sure that in the quarters going forward that you will see far far better performance 42% is good but not good enough i think it should be in triple digits this growth rate and that is what we are targeting clearly the team as well as the entire uh, marketing as well as the sales team in terms of how the assortment should be how we should be placing it how we should tie up with all the key players etc i think that clarity is already there we just need to ensure that that execution which work has already started will happen and we become a far stronger player as far as the commerce concerned clear i don't think there is any dispute in that and you have absolutely identified the issue right on the right on actually yeah right and and the second question is uh, now despite uh, every quarter growing revenue from new pro- new products we are unable to grow the absolute revenue number and it's still stable at uh, where it is so can we come out with the assumption that there is some permanent loss of revenue in almond hair oil uh, category i mean so uh, you know the thoughts on, on, on this so you will not be able to uh, come with that theory because see if you look at uh, i mean just look at the current situation today you look at most of the consumer companies reporting what they are reporting and just look at just sheer numbers if you look at food inflation food inflation 
in April was 8.7, May 8.7, June 9.4, then it dipped a bit in July, August. It's back to 9.2. With this kind of food inflation that is happening and the real wage going at, at best at 4 to 5 percent, you expect deflation to take a hit. Staples will still do a little better. Deflations will take a hit. Oh, the, now the question is much broader. Do we trust the Indian economy and do we expect the economy to do well? And if that does well, then this will have to come back or do we not? So it's a more fundamental question rather than a large consumer question. If we trust that, uh, yes, the economy will do well, this is more a temporary phase, maybe a uh, two-quarter, two three-quarter, four-quarter phase, and it has to turn. If that is the case, then obviously it will come back. I don't think Almond Drops has any lost any specific share across the shares remain more or less steady at similar levels. So that will happen. Yes, that's, that, that's right, sir. But but you know, uh, the looking at the choices in the market, sir, market may be choices. So, to ye accept karna sahi rahega ki, thik hai. Almond hair oil abhi itna consumer preference mein nahi raha jitna pehle tha. So, accepting is better, or should we expect keep on expecting that uh, there will be growth in the revenue from that category? I would think it will be the latter, mainly based on when the market. So, as I said, almond ka uh, uh, acceptance, Ghadiya, etc. is not something that I will subscribe to. Yes, the market has gone down and you see all the major players have this thing. Even the say, other other very, very large player other than Coconut, the other large player also has had the similar uh, thing. I don't think there is anything happening, thing, happening to their brand equity as well. This is just that the market is now under stress, so the cheaper products are selling, etc. When the market comes back, all of this will see again a natural growth back. There has been no shift, the overall shift in the marketplace where the practices itself have changed. Here our usage has gone down. We track the Canta data, look at household panel data. We don't see significant drops, etc. happening either in terms of hair oil usage or the frequency of use, etc. Et so I think we remain quite balanced. Yes, the market conditions have been difficult. As the, as the demand conditions turn, I think we would also bounce back. Okay, okay sir. Very enough. I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, Please limit your questions to two per participant. For any follow-up questions, you may rejoin the queue. Our next question is from line of Shirish Pardeshi from Strandom Broken. Please go ahead. Hi, JD and team. Uh, good afternoon. <coughs> Just two questions in the beginning. You said that uh, non-ADHO uh, portion is now 20%. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is pertaining to the overall hair oil business for us. So if if you include uh, um, uh, coconut, uh, almond, and all the hair oils put together, what is the volume contribution of non-almond oil, uh, almond oil in terms of volume? Non-almond oil. See, as I said, overall is at 20%, and almond drops, hair and skin range also is a substantial portion. So we will keep it at that. I would not uh, be able to split you exactly the hair oil versus the non oil numbers. But this is where we are. 20% comes out of that, where coconut is a substantial number, amla is another number, as well as the almond drops, hair and skin. These are the three main contributors with other contributing here and there. So that gives well, I'm trying, JD, I understand. I'm trying to find out the margin depletion story. Uh, if the, if the uh, almond drop price the premium to coconut, and yeah. if the coconut portion is going to be stronger in terms of volume, yeah. uh, how this margin story is going to pan out in next uh, three to four quarters? Because what you said that now you are now two and a half share in Maharashtra, and yeah. Maharashtra being a coconut oil market, if that volume comes in, what are the levers which are available? I mean, yes, cost efficiency is another thing which is ongoing. So, so uh, correct point. So, so, if you look at both Amla and Coconut, both of these portfolio, which are the larger of the portfolios and the Almond Drops here. Almond Drops and here in uh, skincare range, obviously the gross margins are similar to ADHO. So, there we don't have an issue. The Amla and Coconut obviously are lower than the Almond Drops too. Now, uh, our expectation is the market improves and almond drops itself will perform better. Almond drops has not done well, so this margin looks uh, depleted. The moment almond drops were to come back, we'll be seeing uh, cross margin dilution are going up. Okay. 
my second and last question on the net distribution or STR, if you have the number, if you can share, give me a little more depth in those four states where we have taken an action on coconut. So what is our ND for uh, almond drop and uh, coconut? See, our, uh, our uh, ND is typically, as you are aware, about for about 8.5 lakhs uh, as far as our 8.6 uh, now as far as ADH is concerned. And as far as coconut is concerned, it's already reached about 3.8 or close to that number. So it's already 3.8 lakhs. 8 lakhs, yeah. 3.8 and... Yeah. And specifically in Maharashtra would it be much higher? No, it is all all after all. So Maharashtra is also tracking well, but I think the numbers are still a little higher on the northern side. So all your states of UP, uh, UP, Rajasthan, NP, Punjab, uh, Delhi also to an extent, Haryana to an extent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Before we take our next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from line of Kaushik Poddar from KB Capital Markets Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, last time you have given indication that uh, we'll be the turnover will be growing at the rate of around 10% or something for the next three to five years. So, in the light of whatever consumer slowdown, rural slowdown, uh, do you uh, modify that uh, forecast? Yeah, I think if you look at the midterm, I, I would not like to modify the forecast because I think now that the both rural slowly coming back, urban now bottoming out, we don't feel that it will continue to bottom out uh, and there is a bottomless pit. So we don't think so. Yes, in the near term, there might be a bit of a pressure, but I don't think in the mid to mid term also, in fact, uh, a little more than the near term and mid term, I don't see any pressure. Most of the things that we have now put in place, should track well, so we should be that on good goal. So I am not going to revise to make some numbers as far as. Okay. Now, on the non ADH portfolio, is this something that you are uh, trying to emphasize more than others? I mean, is it is this any product or, or any category that you feel has a higher uh, growth potential than others? A good question. Two, two, uh, two portfolios, clearly. One is obviously the almond drop here and range. I think we have been seeing good traction at shampoo, at conditioner. Conditioner is very small. Uh, the summer lotion that we launched, we got good traction. Now the winter lotion loading is happening. Last year, we got some good responses from the winter lotion. We launched the hair serum sachets in the Bengal the sachet market. Uh, in serum, we are seeing good traction as far as modern trader in commerce is concerned. We are looking at sachet, uh, sorry, serum going across the country in general trade as well. So overall, almond drops extension portfolio or hair and skin range, if you may, uh, we expect that has a good future. It will take, I mean, it's already uh, showing good traction to become substantial and start contributing big time to the, the revenue and profit. It might take another two, three years, but I think clearly that traction has been seen. Last year, this time, I may not have been so confident, but today I can confidently say that we are seeing good now traction in those products, those six, seven products that we have launched, and we will continue to do, uh, uh, push that. We have also seen good traction coming out of our coconut, and uh, as I said, all the measures that have been taken to ensure that the profitability of coconut, obviously it will not track as well as the almond drug profile, but as much as it can, uh, which is still better than all the other hair oils put together. Clearly, we are focusing on everything that is possible to be done as well. Coconut is concerned. So whether be it the green coconut that we have launched in uh, uh, eastern markets, whether be it uh, uh, the blue coconut which has been launched in, the, in the, all the other parts of the uh, country, some of the other products which we are planning to launch in the, maybe in the coming quarters, etc. We feel that the coconut portfolio will be a large portfolio as Bajaj is concerned. The inherent strength of the confidence of the Bajaj household name and the quality that it will provide has uh, stood us in good stead, and that is something that we do. So these two ranges clearly, there are certain other ranges that we have already in pipeline, but we don't want to launch it now because there are already so much in the portfolio in the pipeline. Until the market conditions improve, we would not like to lose that up. Phase two of the 
launches in some of the other products, but that is something also in the pipeline. So as far as pipelining is concerned, we are very clear. At this stage, Almond Drops has a range and coconut range, and not coconut oil only, but the coconut range. These are the two things we'll push quite uh, strongly, and we look at the future as the market conditions. Coconut range means what? I mean, beyond coconut oil also? So, so beyond uh, pure coconut oil, yeah. So today we have two pure coconut oils. One is, as far as the rest of the market is concerned, which is a pure coconut copra grade one oil, and the one that sells in the eastern part, which is an, uh, which is similar to the market leader, which is a Shalimar, which is also a, also a pure coconut oil, but that's not grade one. It has a roasted smell. It is a little different. You can uh, distinctly uh, different texture and feel. Uh, so that is what we have. These are the two products. We feel that there are two more other products that uh, can be launched in that. The work is already there. Good uh, gross margin profiles. They will also come back. Yeah. As you, as you, one you can obviously understand is the value added coconut, which we already had a cocoa onion that needs to come back. We will have to see when we time that launch, as well as another one we are looking at in that range. So, so there will be about three, four products in the overall coconut portfolio. Okay. Uh, my last question, which is that, uh, see, so I, I think the eastern region. Uh, I request you to go and uh, get back to the question. Okay, okay, fine, uh, fine. Let him finish with a, I think there's a question. Sure, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, see, my question is, uh, I see in the eastern region, I don't see much of advertising or sales promotion in this thing. I mean, is it done at the shop level or something that I'm missing out, at least on the newspapers or magazines or anything? I don't see much. I mean, how is the... ASP tackled in say eastern region. So, so what we wanted to do, and that is what is the uh, uh, template that we have put for most of our uh, new products is first we get into a GTM. Once the entire GTM is over and uh, it has already reached the retail uh, retail outlets, etc., we just typically for day two or three days process. Then we get into both either in complete local advertising or definitely POSP. Uh, POSP, I mean, you have already seen POP and POS already at the uh, shops with various green t shirts and danglers, etc. Those are already there. Already we have had a digital content made specifically for the regional uh, language in uh, West Bengal. So that is already there. Some of it is already there. You may not have tracked it directly. We are now exploring whether we need to get into regional language advertising, etc., like we have done in Maharashtra and some other parts. That is something we'll have to decide based on how we want to push that. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, the 10% medium term growth stands, right? Yeah, definitely. We would like to. Close. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from Line of Percy Pantaki from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. So our uh, overall EBITDA margin is around 15%, but it's a story of two parts, right? Uh, ADHO uh, uh, is uh, uh, quite profitable. Some of the new businesses uh, or rather new products would be either very low margin or might be loss making. So could you give us some idea as to what these two parts are? So like if ADHO alone, if I look at can I say that it's like 20% uh, plus uh, margin and then uh, there is a certain loss on the remaining products? Can you give some idea on that? So it's perfectly correct. It's not loss making for all the products, obviously. So, yeah, some of the products we are investing in, and let's say most of the AD extension products, the EBITDA margins will not be positive. Some of them will not be positive at this stage. Yeah, but the gross margins are in upwards of 55%. So, we are investing in some of these products. Some of the products like coconut, etc., they are positive as far as EBITDA is concerned, but not obviously in the range. So if you look at very, very overall, if I were to give you a sense, then yes, ADHO remains 20% plus, and the difference delta between ADHO and the non-ADHO would be about a, roughly about a 6% difference between an ADHO and a non-ADHO. Right. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to understand on uh, ADHO, if I look at uh, the sales uh, versus pre-COVID, I, I think it would be flat to a marginal decline. And over a five, six year period, the pricing has gone up uh, close to 15%. So would I be right in estimating that versus pre-COVID levels, the volumes of ADHO are down about 15%? No, I don't think so. So, if you look at the volume, uh, uh, the value sales, uh, if I look at the four-year CHR is about 4%, from 
so quick commerce salience as i said is low at this stage only at 6% which we personally which we think can really scale up much stronger yeah. okay and just uh, the last thing uh, on the uh, extensions of adho is the acceptance on quick commerce uh, uh, relatively higher or it is too small to uh, now talk about it so so wherever we are seeing responses the responses are very very encouraging so that's where we are going very heavy on the ad extension such as well quick commerce so quick commerce obviously as you are aware the margins at this stage at least as of today as we speak are better than the larger e-commerce players so that also obviously is an incentive for everybody as well as us and fortunately we have seen good traction as far well as our ad extension ad uh, hair and skin range uh, products are concerned which is what we feel up significantly for the going forward at least we are thinking and uh, last on on the channel mix itself uh, you highlighted that almost i think 30% of the sales comes from the uh, organized retail right uh, so um, so uh, is this share likely to go up then uh, is there any impact on our overall margins profile for the company so so i think at 30% we are already topping it out i don't think that we are significant increase because our major focus is to ensure the general trade which has had a not a, a muted performance come back so that is what will be uh, the effort in yes the 30% can can go up a few percentage point here and there but i think roughly uh, topped out as far as that is concerned the 70 30 mix is what will be the new normal as far as what we think is and, and why do you say that quick commerce will have better margins than e-commerce um, Uh, see, see, it's just a, a power of a negotiation as far as the two very very large players are concerned. If you look at the two large players, I mean, given the the fact that they also see that uh, that general trade, most of these companies are finding it difficult to scale up general trade. They also realize that these are uh, we are the easy uh, easy growth drivers, growth levers for most of the companies. So so they also extract their pound of flesh. Uh, maybe not in the last uh, one quarter or so as they see the quick com scaling up and they have to also uh, this but other than that both these two large players have been uh, commanding their uh, 